In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply normal map decals to both planar and curved surfaces. I'll address some of the limitations of this method and how to overcome them as well. And after that, I'll show you how to create these decals yourself, if in case you are interested in creating your own set of decals for your projects and for the purpose of selling them online. Before we begin, make sure you download the free pack of normal map decals off my Gumroad store to follow along and test them out yourself. The link to that is in the description of this video. I will also be releasing a set of premium normal map decals, so make sure you follow me on Gumroad to be notified when the product goes live. But with that out of the way, let us look at how to apply these normal map decals. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to apply normal map decals to both planar and curved surfaces. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a cube as well as a cylinder. I'm going to hide the cylinder here for the time being and go ahead and create a plane as well. Now let's just move this plane in front and rotate that on the x-axis by 90 degrees and scale that down just a hair. Then I'm going to jump into the shading tab and create a new material for both of these objects. But I'm going to ensure that the material is the same across these two meshes. So going to make these both metallic and now with the plane selected I'm going to search for an image texture and a normal map node as well. Once I do that I'm going to go ahead and search for a normal map. Now ensure that you've downloaded my free pack from my Gumroad store in order to follow along. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that now. So now with the normal map loaded up, I'm just going to make sure that the color space is set to non-color and I'm going to connect these together and wait for it to compile. Once that's done, I'm going to create a shrink wrap modifier and select the cube as our target mesh. So once I select that, it's going to go ahead and project the plane onto the face of the cube. I'm also going to set the offset value to 0 0.001. Now we can see that this decal has been applied to the face of this cube seamlessly. Now let's move on to the cylinder. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide the plane and the cube and bring up the cylinder here. I'll just shade smooth, go to object data and set this to auto smooth. Now I'm going to create a new plane and bring this in front again. Rotate that on the x-axis by 90 degrees and just scale that down a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a metallic material for these two. And let's go ahead with the plane selected and search for another image texture as well as a normal map. And again, I'm going to repeat the same process. So once I do that, set this to non-color, connect these two together, wait for it to compile. And I'm going to go to a front view and ensure that I make some cuts into this because we want this to conform along the form of the cylinder. So jump into edit mode and bring up the loop cut tool. And I'm just going to go into wireframe just to ensure that I have the right number of loops here and you'll see in a bit why this is important so just jump back into the look dev mode select this create a shrink wrap modifier and select the cylinder here as our target mesh I'll then change the mode from nearest surface point to project uncheck positive and check negative and we'll bring the offset up a bit. So we're gonna have to go ahead and shade smooth here and set the normal to auto smooth. Now I'm going to go back to the modifier tab here and I'll play with the offset value and see what I can get away with. Now here's where we're gonna run into a bit of a limitation. So I'll just go back to our layout mode and create a camera. 
let's just bring this back here and reset our rotation. Let's rotate this on the x axis by 90 degrees and pull this all the way back like so. We're also going to want to create a light. We're just going to create an area light. Rotate this by 90 degrees as well. Let's just pull that back a bit. So, and just place it off to the side here. And I'm going to hit render. So now that our render is done, you can see that this decal is actually not seamless. You can see that it isn't sitting properly on this mesh. Now there's a way to actually overcome this, but it's a little bit hacky, but that really doesn't matter because we are employing this technique for concept models and for 3D illustration. So let me show you how you can actually fix this problem. So now we're back in the layout mode and I'm going to select our plane here and disable the shrink wrap modifier, jump into the front view and let's just go to wireframe mode and scale down the plane till the edges are in better alignment with the cylinder. I'm going to re-enable the shrink wrap modifier and select our cylinder. I'll jump into edit mode and cut a loop into the surface here and bevel that till it meets the top and bottom of the decal. So with that done, I'm going to just select the cylinder here and actually let's select the plane. Just go back into solid mode, set the opposite to zero such so that the, the faces of the cylinder and the faces of the plane are coplanar. And with that done, I'm just going to go ahead and select the plane and I'm going to apply that. Then I'll select the cylinder and go into the front view, switch to face mode and just delete the faces here. Now I'm also going to ensure that I'm not selecting any faces that I don't want. I'm going to get rid of those faces. So now I'm going to select the cylinder as well as the plane here that we've got and I'm going to combine them by hitting Control J. Now with that, I'm going to jump into edit mode once again, go into vertices mode, and I'm going to merge all these vertices by distance. And I'm going to increase the distance value. And just ensure that I'm actually selecting all the vertices and merge by distance again. Just bring that back down and ensure we merge all the vertices that we want merged. So with this done, let's jump back into the shading tab and now you can see that we've actually added this decal to the surface of the cylinder seamlessly. So now that we've looked at how we can apply normal map decals to both planar and curved surfaces, let's look at what we can actually do with these things. So now we can actually control the depth of these uh, decals by just playing around with the strength of the normal map. And so you can make it as shallow or a little deep. You can't punch in holes, obviously but you can sort of control how shallow or how deep you want these decals to be. So now let's go back to the cube that we had created initially. And let me show you some of the ways in which we can actually get creative with these normal maps. So I'll just select the decal that we have here. And let me just switch off the shrink wrap modifier for the time being. And now what I'm going to do is jump into edit mode and cut a loop horizontally and bevel that like so and cut a loop vertically as well and bevel that again like so. And once I do that, I'm just going to 
reactivate our shrink wrap modifier and I'll just go ahead and apply this shrink wrap modifier here. Now I'll select the plane again that we have here and I will jump into edit mode, select the face here and invert that and let's just extrude this out. So you can very easily cut loops into your normal maps and also extrude portions of it to create a sense of depth. Now the beauty of normal map decals is that they change according to different lighting conditions. So if I were to rotate the lights in our scene here, you can see that the normal map actually reacts to the changing lighting conditions. So the other thing is these also appear in reflections. So it's a great way to fake details when concept modeling or if you are doing any kind of 3D illustration. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to create a normal map decal yourself. So I'm gonna start by creating a plane and I'm gonna jump into edit mode. I'll cut a loop vertically and horizontally. And let me just get go into face mode and get rid of these faces. Then I'm just gonna cut a pattern into this, like so. And then I'm going to mirror this. So let's just mirror that on the X and Y axis and apply that. Now I'm gonna select these and scale that in a bit on the Y, I mean X axis. And then I'm going to select the faces on the outer side here. And I'm going to insert that. So let me just insert that again, like so. And I'll select the faces in the middle and I'm just going to push that down like so. And then I'm going to scale that a bit in again. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the edges here and then I'm going to bevel these so I'll give it about eight segments and I'm just going to reduce the width just a little bit like so now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these unnecessary edges. And I'm going to do a limited dissolve. So once I do that, I'm going to select the edges on the bottom as well as on the top. And I'm going to bevel these as well. like so. Then I'm gonna shade smooth and now let's go into the shading tab and let's give this a high contrast material. And let's just change the scene. And you can see that we've got some artifacting going on here so I'm going to just get rid of that so in order to do that let's just jump into edit mode and select the faces here like so and let's just insert that ever so slightly and let's jump into look dev mode and now let's just take a look at this again so now this looks perfect. So let's jump into the layout mode once again. Let's create a, another plane. And now this secondary plane that we've created here is going to be our baking plane. So just jump back into the shading tab again. And let's select the baking plane and create a new material. Now let's search for an image texture. And let's search for a normal map. The next thing you want to do is come on over to your image texture and hit new and then give it a name. I'm just going to call it NM decal. 
and you're going to want to leave your width and height at 1k initially and once you're happy with your bakes you can then come back and set it to 2k or 4k and you also need to ensure that 32-bit float is checked and then hit ok the next thing i'm going to do is change the color space from linear to non-color and then we're going to come on over to the rendering tab we're going to change the render engine from EV to cycles. After that, let's change the bake type from combined to normal and ensure that selected to active is checked. So once that's done, I'm just going to ensure the image texture here is selected. Then I'm going to select the detail that we have here and then our baking plane. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit bake. So let's just wait for that to bake. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and connect these and see what we have here. So I'm going to just change this to the same material. And now you can see that we have this detail projected onto this plane. So once you're happy with the results, you can then go ahead and bake this again at a higher resolution. And then in order to save your normal map, just head on over to the image editor and you should find your normal map right over here. So just go ahead and save this out. And that's how you create a normal map decal in Blender. So that's it for this video. If you found it informative, give the video a thumbs up. I'd also appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel and sharing the video with someone you know that might benefit from it. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.